In this video, I'd like to run through the world quests and reputations in Battle for Azeroth compared with Legion. So just as in Legion, world quests will not unlock without a number of objectives being met. You will need to be level 120 and at least need to complete some level cap quests. In Legion, the requirements were essentially tied to reputation. But in Battle for Azeroth, we have to complete a short quest chain in each of the three opposing faction zones. Currently in the beta, there are no reputation requirements, but that may not be the base when the expansion launches. As such, just as with Legion, it might be sensible to ensure that you get the reputation requirements as you level rather than leaving yourself with questing to be done in leveling zones after level cap. Once world quests are unlocked, you'll find yourself facing a more time-consuming process than in Legion. In Legion, we had most of the flight points discovered for all but one of the zones because we quested in them and we were encouraged to continue questing in Suramar to unlock those ones as well. In addition, several of the Battle for Azeroth zones have terrain, which means that riding from one location to another is less than straightforward before you have the flight points. Think high mountain, but multiple zones like that. Sometimes getting flight points isn't just a matter of exploring either. Some require a quest chain to be completed before you can find them. In addition, there are flight points you will never acquire because they are faction specific. It will go without saying that Horde will have a tougher time getting around Kul Taras than Alliance players will, and vice versa. The world quests themselves reward artifact power, war resources, which is the BFA equivalent of Horde resources, equipment or gold. There are also pet battle and profession based world quests which provide related rewards just as they do in Legion. In addition, just as with Legion, all world quests will award some reputation and so will be wanted to complete as many as possible within the time we have available. Currently, the reputation rewards lack a little imagination on the beta, but I have hopes that some things will change. For example, each reputation quartermaster offers a cloak at Honoured. It's a decent item level for a new leading character, but they all offer a cloak and only that. Given the time it can take to even get Honoured, I'd see no problem with a bit more variety amongst the quartermasters. Still, maybe it's deliberate and they only want the variation to be in secondary stats and not in equipment slots. So as I say, at Honoured, there's really just a cloak available at Revered. Uh, there's some more higher item level gear. Usually the way these things work though, isn't it, for most players is by the time they've actually got the uh, reputation to get those items, they've got better elsewhere. But, you know, there it is. Exalted, the obligatory tabard here. Uh, then you've got some patterns as well with some reputation vendors also offering a mount at Exalted. In addition to complete an associated world quest we can also farm reputation at level cap by completing missions. As Blizzard noted the missions in Battle for Azeroth will be more low-key than in the past. Common rewards for the missions including small amounts of artifact power or reputation. There are also gold rewards as well. Personally, I think the reputation missions will be of more use to begin with due to the larger amounts of artifact power that we can farm elsewhere. Finally, scribes will be able to craft items which will allow people to farm more reputation for a specific faction each day. Just as in Legion, there are also emissary quests each day. These require that you complete a number of world quests tied to a particular reputation faction. However, unlike in Legion, they do not award caches. Bearing in mind that the most important feature of caches in Legion was the chance to get a legendary or at least increase your bad luck protection, with the legendary system gone from Battle for Azeroth, it may be that we don't really need the anticipation of opening a cache anymore. We still receive a bonus reward for turning in the emissary quest, though gear doesn't seem to be one of the rewards on offer. The world quests mostly take the form of normal quests, but with some extra puzzle and gimmicky type quests courtesy of the Tortolan faction, these are probably intended to take the place of the Kirin Tor world quest from Legion. Each zone has a specific rep faction attached to it, just as with Legion. We also get a whistle for fast travel to the nearest flight point, as before. All things considered, however, I personally find it much more time consuming to do world quests in BFA as compared with pre-flight Legion. However, it does get easier once you've unlocked more flight points. It's just that this process takes you well into early level cap content. If you have only a limited amount of time to spend on world quests each day, then you are going to need to prioritise what you do quite strongly. It will also be a lot better for small island locations when we get our water strider, which Blizzard in an act of pure spite have taken from us currently in the beta. I am glad 
that we're finally getting an expansion that launches during my holidays though, so I personally won't feel the need to rush at everything. So those are my impressions of world quests and reputations of the Battle for Azeroth, as far as I've been able to experience them in the beta at any rate. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, I will be producing more definitive guides when it's closer to the launch itself. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share with others for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.